Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Thursday, March 4th. We're going to be talking some NBA DFS DraftKings on both FanDuel and DraftKings for today. This is the last slate before the All-Star break, so we're going to have a little bit of a break here in terms of the NBA DFS. But before we get started, we're going to talk about yesterday's picks, how they turned out, and kind of why they turned out the way that they did. So on the DraftKings side, we had Dennis Schroeder, $5,900, looking for about 30 fantasy points out of him. He got 46.25, so definitely a major hit there. Sterling Brown, $4,100, looking for 20, 21 fantasy points out of him. Got to 17.25. He was a miss. It was nice to see him in the starting lineup. Nice to see him play pretty big minutes, but he just didn't quite get there yesterday. Then at small four, we had Norman Powell. $6,700 looking for 34 fantasy points out of him. He got to 46.25, so he was definitely hit. Definitely in play again as well today. Then Markeith Morris, $3,700 looking for 19 fantasy points out of him. He got 23.25, so he was a hit. Then Chris Boucher, $6,400 looking for 32 fantasy points out of him. Got to 34.5, so he is definitely a hit. So pretty good day on the DraftKings side overall yesterday. Then on the FanDuel side, we had Dennis Schroeder as well. $5,500, looking for about 28 fantasy points out of him. Got 45.7, so he was a hit as well. Then Taylor Horton Tucker, $3,900, looking for 20 fantasy points out of him. Got to 22.9, so he was a hit. He would have been a, probably even a bigger hit if Kyle Kuzma didn't end up starting yesterday, but that's a whole other story. Then Harrison Barnes, $6,800, looking for 34 points out of him. Got 29.6, so he was a mess. Probably not a guy that killed you overall, but still could have been better. Then for that power forward position, we had Jay Sean Tate, $4,900. Looking for about 25 fantasy points out of him. He got to 29.5, so he was a hit. And then last but not least, we had Steven Adams, $5,100. You're looking for about 26 fantasy points out of him. He got nine. Just a bad game for him overall. Only played 21 minutes. They did play a little bit more of that small ball lineup, which seems like they're starting to do a little bit more often. But with that being said, we're going to get over to today's injuries. So the Raptors are exactly the same as they were the last game out. We saw them have a starting lineup of Kyle Lowry, Terrence Davis, Norman Powell, Yudo, Yudo Watanabe, and Aaron Baines yesterday. We'll see if that's the same starting lineup today or not. Watanabe barely played after that starting rotation, so not really concerned about him overall. Then for the Celtics, they are essentially what they've been lately. I would not be surprised if you see one of these guys scratched late today. There's going to be a lot of late scratches probably with the All-Star game coming up, kind of giving some guys a little bit of extra rest. So if you see Jalen Brown, maybe a late scratch, maybe Kemba Walker, wouldn't surprise me at all, especially going against Toronto, who's not at full capacity either. Then for the Clippers, we're really just looking at Kawhi Leonard, who was scratched way late two days ago, screwed over a lot of people. Not too much else you can say about that. Uh, I was one of those included for one of my cash lineups on DraftKings. Then Marcus Morris, he is a game time decision as well. Looks like he might not play. So guys like Nick Batum might get a little bit of extra run in this game. And then if Kawhi Leonard doesn't play again, Reggie Jackson's probably going to be in that starting lineup. Him, Paul George, Patrick Beverly, definitely in play on pretty much both sites. Then for the Wizards, they're just missing Ish Smith. So pretty much the same as they've been. Detroit is going to be an interesting one. We saw them without Grant and Jackson yesterday. I think both those guys are going to miss once again today. So that's just the way I'm projecting it right now. On the Knicks side, we got Derrick Rose, game time decision. Todd Gibson and Alfred Payton unlikely to play. Would not surprise me if Derrick Rose misses again. Then for the Denver Nuggets, they are exactly the same as they were the last time out, so no major concerns there. Pacers are exactly the same. Would not be surprised if Sabonis misses in this game. He was kind of a game-time decision yesterday, so maybe going into the break, they give him a little bit of an extra day off. Then for the Bucks, they are exactly the same as the last time out. I would not be surprised if Drew Holiday rests in this game, you know, coming off of his COVID absence, going into the All-Star break, just trying to get him right. Then for Memphis, just Grayson Allen out in this one besides Jackson, who's been out pretty much all year. So they're pretty much as healthy as they're going to get for a while now. For the Miami Heat, this is one that we're going to be watching out for. Jimmy Butler, game time decision. Bam Adebayo, game time decision. And then Avery Bradley, who hasn't played in a while either. So just keep your eyes out on that one. If Jimmy Butler doesn't play, it definitely opens up some more minutes for guys like Gordon Dragic. Some more extra run for Kendrick Nunn and Tyler Hero as well. 
Then the Pelicans are all the way healthy. And then for the Thunder, they're just missing Diallo once again. It's assumed Al Horford is going to rest on the back-to-back. Isaiah Roby should be filling in for him on the center position. And then for the Spurs, LaMarcus Aldridge was ruled out now. Rudy Gay's still out. Vassell and Devin White are all out as well. So it's pretty similar to what it's been in recent days. We'll see if Keldon Johnson gets back into that starting lineup or not. But Trey Lyle should still see pretty decent minutes in this game. Then we get over to the Golden State Warriors, and this is a really interesting one. Kelly Oubre missed last night. I don't think he's going to play today either. But Steph Curry and Draymond Green both did not travel with the team. This is going to probably end up in a blowout, honestly, because the Suns have been playing really well, and the Warriors are without essentially two or three of their best players in this game. So it's going to be a really interesting one. It'll be interesting to see their starting lineup. It is a late game, so it's just kind of hard to know who's actually going to end up starting in that. Uh, They do have Michael Mulder in there now, but I don't know if he's really a traditional point guard either. So it's be real interesting to see who kind of facilitates that offense. If uh, Kelly Oubre misses, that could be a good night for Andrew Wiggins. Ken Bazemore is definitely in play as well. Then for the Phoenix Suns, they're all the way healthy. So no, no concerns there at all. And then we move down to the Kings. Looks like Parker and Whiteside are both going to be out again. Hal Burton's still out. So pretty much the same as it was yesterday. Trailblazers looking about the same as they've been as well. Harry Giles, still a game-time decision. I still doubt he plays until after that all-star break. Uh, But with that being said, that's pretty much the injuries for today. Definitely going to be a lot of guys ruled out later on today. So definitely keep an eye out on that. Even LaMarcus Aldridge and... Curry and Draymond, they were all ruled out right before I recorded this. So some of my picks may be even a little bit different now. Haven't had a chance to look at that completely. But with that being said, these are going to be the guys that I had going into that news. On the DraftKings side, we have Dennis Smith Jr. $4,800, looking for 24 points out of him. Been playing more minutes lately, been playing better. I don't think Jackson, I don't think Grant, I don't think either one of them is going to play again. They both missed yesterday. So he's going to have a lot of usage in this game. And then at shooting guard position, we have Sheev Mikhailu. And as you guys know, I am a big Kansas fan. He is a guy that I loved watching at Kansas. Hasn't quite hit his mark in the NBA. Kind of had some games where he shoots really well and does okay that way. But otherwise, hasn't had much of an impact on the NBA side. $3,100, you're looking for 16 fantasy points out of him. He got north of 20 last night for a hundred dollars more so he's definitely somebody that i would consider in this game definitely a guy that's a shooter and it's probably a little bit more real life point reliant but he should get a couple of rebounds maybe an assist maybe a steal here and there as well then at that small forward position we had him a little bit last night ken Bazemore. so he's thirty five hundred dollars you're looking for about 18 fantasy points out of him got to like 24 last night so Definitely somebody that's very interesting on a slate like today, especially one the Warriors are not going to have quite as many bodies. And with that being said, too, the Warriors did bring back Jordan Poole and Nico Mannon yesterday. And I thought that was kind of weird going into the All-Star break. I'm like, why did they bring these guys back? So maybe they kind of had this planned out in advance that they were going to you know, rest Steph and Draymond today. So they were wanting to get them guys some extra minutes as well. So Maybe those guys are in play today, too. Um, if you're playing in large field GPP, maybe you can take a shot on like a guy like Jordan Poole. Maybe you take a shot on a guy like Damon Lee as well. Definitely should be some value there. Definitely going to be interesting seeing who they have in their starting lineup. Then at power forward, I have Robert Covington. He is $5,900. You're looking for about 30 fantasy points out of him, averaging about 25 on the season. Been playing better lately, been getting that backup center run. A matchup against the Kings, it's one that's going to be very good for him overall. So I think he's definitely in play today. Definitely a guy that I played a little bit yesterday. Probably wish I played a little bit more of. Then at that center position, we have Nikolai Jokic. And I think this is a day you can pay up for both him and Giannis if you want to do so. Definitely want to pay up for a couple different studs because there is so much value out there. Part of today is going to be picking the right value plays and picking the right studs. And like always, I'll have all the different news down in the comments to help you guys know who's in and who's out. And then we can kind of talk about good plays down there as well. But Nikolai Jokic, you know, he's $10,900. So you're looking for about 55 points out of him, averaging 60 on the season, goes against the Pacers. Miles Turner is a good defender. I know that. But it's Nikolai Jokic, and 
it's not going to matter. So, But if you go with these five guys over on draft, you'll have $21,800 left over. Just under $7,300 per player, so definitely some room to spend it up and spend down on a day like today, like I already mentioned. And then with that being said, we're going to get moved over to Fandle, talk about my picks over there. So on the Fandle side, we have Malcolm Brogdon, $6,700. He's not a guy that I like playing too often, honestly. Hasn't really had that shooting touch as much this year. Obviously, we saw the big game from TJ McConnell last night, but that really doesn't affect Malcolm Brogdon too much. Uh, TJ McConnell is $5,000, so I don't mind playing him today either. Yesterday, when there was all that value out on the slate, nobody played him, but he did have that big 70-point game. So so back to Brogdon, though. $6,700, you're looking for 34 points out of him, averaging 38 on the season. So definitely in play there. Definitely a good price down spot for him overall. Then shooting guard position, Paul George, $7,900. You're looking for about 40 fantasy points out of him. That's what he's averaging on this season. And I don't think Kawhi Leonard plays in this game, so it should be another very good day for Paul George. And it's a very, very, very good matchup against the Washington Wizards, who have one of the worst defenses in all of the NBA. Then I don't like to double dip too much, but Ken Bazemore is just probably too good of a play not to play today. $4,200, you're looking for 21 points out of him. You should definitely get you over 20 in this game. Definitely play big minutes, especially without all those guys that I mentioned earlier that could be missing. Then at power forward position, I got Isaiah Roby. Probably starting at center today, probably playing pretty good minutes with Al Horford resting on the back-to-back. So I think he's a guy that can definitely get you 25 points pretty easily today. And for his value, that's definitely going to pay off. Then last but not least, we have center Mason Plumley. This is probably not a name that excites a lot of people, honestly. But... Mason Plumley has been very good in games where there haven't been as much help. So he's a guy that's had a couple triple doubles this year. He's going to get the big usage, especially if Grant and Jackson don't play. So he's definitely a guy I'm considering today. You know, you're looking for 31, 32 fantasy points out of him. Averaging almost 30 on the season. And that takes into effect all the games that he's played this season, which, you know, some of them were with Blake Griffin. Some of them were with Jeremy Grant. Some of them were with Josh Jackson. Some of them were with Derrick Rose when he was on the team. So there's a lot more usage to go around on a day like today, especially if all those other guys aren't playing. And then he goes against the Knicks. Not the best defensive matchup in the world, but I'm not really afraid of Nerland's Noel either way either. So definitely a guy that I'm considering today at that center position. So if you go with these five guys over on FanDuel for today, you'll have $30,300 left over, almost $7,600 per player. So definitely a lot of flexibility today. Like I said on DraftKings, you're going to pay up for some guys and pay down for some guys. Just kind of mix and match, see what works out best for you guys. Definitely going to be an interesting slate overall. Hopefully we're not scrambling quite as much like yesterday where the news kept changing every like 15 minutes it seemed like. Hopefully we have a lot of that news earlier on today, especially headed into that all-star break. Most teams probably know who's going to play or who's not going to play today, especially in terms of resting guys. So hopefully we get that news, you know, around that 1.30 injury report, maybe a couple hours after that. So we have a little bit of time to prepare before the slate actually locks. And with that being said, if you guys have any questions at all regarding NBA DFS, especially for today's slate, please be sure to leave them down in the comments. As always, I'll be listing all the news and starting lineups as they become available down there as well. And with that being said, if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It really helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, and that's really one for you, the viewers. Helping you guys with your DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL. Helping you guys with your fantasy football teams. Covering all the different football news this offseason as it comes out. And as we move forward into baseball season, going to be covering some fantasy baseball and some baseball news as well. If you are new or current subscribers yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. And with that being said, I post up daily NBA DFS videos. I know the All-Star break's coming up, so we're going to have about a week off here now. But with that being said, with that break off, I'm going to be pumping out some extra fantasy football content. So if you guys are into fantasy football as well, be sure to check that out too. But with that being said, that's really all I got for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoy. Hopefully you guys do very well in NBA DFS. You know, this last slate before the all-star break. And hopefully we have some big winners tonight because I want to see that happening for each and every one of you. 
And then last but not least, just want to give a special shout out to you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Definitely means a lot to me. Definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do so. And I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.